Hello, this is Christina Rodriguez, and this video is going to be about how to create a processing definition. So in order to do this, I'm actually going to uh, go to some of our archive data. So just as a reminder, go over to archives, browse archives, attach to the computer. See how quick I can do this. You want to click our external hard drive, go into the GERTS Inky site, and now pick whichever one. Make sure you single click it, don't double click it. You want all the folders that are within this folder. Uh, so you need to just single click it and then go down and actually press select folder. So now I'm just going to uh, pick one of these uh, proliferation plates that we did. I believe these were some MCF7 cells. Um, not sure if they were treated with drugs or anything, but should be some good examples. So what you'll need to do first is actually create an image collection. So in the top right here, you're going to go to create or add to uh, image collection and so you can see that you can do some test ones um, or you can uh, so normally there'd be more if you weren't within the archive but because we're in the archive it's just this one um, but that's fine because normally you'd be needing to create a new one anyway so we're just going to call this uh, display test I don't know making something up so and add this image to the collection. And what you want to do is just pick different images that you feel are fairly representative of your cells um, and just click around and each time you'll just again go to create or add to image collection. Um, looks like a good one. How it looks more confluent. You want to pick ones that are at different confluencies. Um, so I'm gonna kind of pick all over the, the place. These are some nice oh, cobblestone-y looking ones. And so you kind of get the idea that you're just picking a bunch of different ones that you feel like are fairly representative. And you want about eight images all together. So sorry, you have to sit and watch as I randomly click on wells. I'm kind of picking some of these ones because they do have a lot of debris and that might be something we want to uh, get rid of. We've got six images so far. And the thing about picking a bunch of different images is that gives it basically more data for it to train itself on. And so we'll get a better uh, initial algorithm. Initial processing definition. So uh, I wasn't paying attention and I don't know <laughs> uh, how many I've done. So, okay, yeah, this would make eight. So now we've created our image collection and what now we can go into creating the processing definition. So in order to do that, we're again, top right, new processing definition, and we're going to tell it which image collection we want, the one we just made, and press continue. And so what you want to do first is go up to this top right and you'll see preview and do preview all. So right now it's, you can see it's training itself on the image collection that we gave it. Uh, and so it's looking at all those images and already training itself on an algorithm to detect those cells. And so what it'll do is use that algorithm, use this processing definition to create those confluency masks that it lays over the cells. Um, and so I can already show you one of those now. If you click on that, that indicates to you what it is detecting as cells and basing its determination of the confluence percentage on, so how it's deciding that data. So right now it's looking at this and telling you that it's about 30% confluent um, and showing you exactly what it believes is um, as cells. And you can see it is picking up a lot of this debris. Um, if it was more, that might be more of an issue. You can definitely see it here too. So that might be something we can uh, change up here. But other than picking up all that debris, if you zoom in using this tool over here in the top right, you can see that it is detecting the cells pretty pretty well. Uh, and it's you know coming in real close to them. That's one of the things you can look for. Um, so that part looks pretty good. And it's overall fairly accurate in the percent confluent it's giving you. You know, we're not looking at this and it telling us that this is only 10% confluent or something like that. Um, so overall, this actually looks pretty good. 
Um, and I think that's the useful thing about picking so many images for it. Here again, you can see that might really be throwing it off. So in order to tweak these things, what you'll do is go over here to the left, and these are the different parameters that you can change. Um, so top one being this segmentation adjustment, and in the description of the video, I'll put the actual uh, definitions provided by Incusite uh, company for each of these, just for you to easily be able to refer to, but also it gives you kind of the info here. Uh, and I think those are the definitions I'm actually going to include there. So, but, so the segmentation adjustment is basically how you can bias it towards detecting more cells or to detecting kind of less background. So say if you went up uh, and you, each time you, t you change one of these parameters, you can just preview it on your current page. And you want to take note of what the confluence was before you uh, changed it. So right now it's at 36.8% confluent. We're changing it to 1.8, and I'm just going to preview current. Uh, once you kind of find something that you're happy with, you would press preview all, um, and that would <coughs> apply to all of them, and you can look through across the board. I don't normally do that until I'm fairly happy with what I've changed. So you can see that by biasing it towards picking up more cells, now it's actually just picking up more background and it's jumped all the way up to 51%. Um, so I did do that so that you could see that, uh, not because I thought that that would fix the situation. Obviously we don't want it grabbing more than what we need. So, uh, and if you went the other route, I'm really showing you extremes because it's just the easiest way to get an idea of how these different param parameters work. So now you can see Maybe you're picking up less of this background, but you're also picking up less of the actual cells uh, themselves. So if you zoom in, see you can see that it's really not picking up as much of the cells. And so you're gonna be calling it a little bit low. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, and now you've gone down to 26. So I'm gonna go back to one on here, uh, preview current. And I'll show you, so this was how it was originally. Again, we're at 36.8%. So, and these are some of the other things you could change. So whole fill and adjusting the pixel size is more about if you have clusters of cells, but it's grabbing a lot of empty space um, or not grabbing space. It, like if you felt like this was cells, you could kind of adjust these whole fills. I don't think that is cells, so I think it is being accurate but that's kind of where that can come into play. Uh, also, if you felt like it wasn't quite reaching all the borders of your cells and just not quite covering them enough, um, for example, it might be easier to see uh, sort of down here. You might feel like if th that was a bigger problem all over the place, uh, then you could change the actual pixel size. So here you could actually go up in pixel size and basically pick up more cells. So if you felt it was underestimating the confluency, that's one of those uh, ways you could adapt that. Again, the whole fill, I rarely have to do anything with the whole fill, pretty much never. Um, but just to give you an idea, I increased that pixel size to two, we're at 36.8. Now you can see it's at 49%. So that really increased it, especially because it's still picking up all this background. So I'm gonna go back, oops, back to zero on that. Uh, and show you these filters, which this area one I think is kind of the most useful. Uh, eccentricity is more about um, about if you have scratches or lots of bubbles. Uh, maybe if, if for some reason, I'm not sure uh, why you might have that issue, but if for some reason you had really straight lines or perfect circles like bubbles, uh, then that's where the eccentricity can come in handy to avoid um, anything too perfectly circular or too perfectly straight that's clearly not just a natural um, cell formation. So, and I think, yeah, a perfect circle is going to be closer to zero and a perfect line would be uh, closer to one. So you could kind of avoid whatever the issue is by changing the min and max here under eccentricity. But what can actually be useful is say you zoom in here and, um, you measured some of this background that it's picking up. You can see it's like 15, uh, 34, whatever. 
you can kind of play around. So you can kind of get an idea of the size you want to avoid. So you want a minimum of say over 50 or even honestly you could do over 100. Um, and so to avoid getting these, but that shouldn't exclude too much of your real actual cells. And again, this is where you can tweak. But so right now we're at 36.8. If we previewed current just by having changed that area, you can see we lost a lot of those um, little background debris. Didn't really lose much as far as cells. Um, honestly, we could probably go up even higher, maybe to 250. And you can see, I mean, because that only got rid of 3%. Um, so now we're at 34%. Um, but that looks pretty good. So, and that removed, what, 4%? I forget what it was at before now. Um, but you can see it really lost a lot of that debris. So that's where you can really start changing things. And now, all right, so say we go up to 350 uh, and we preview all. Sometimes it can be helpful to have written down the original confluencies for each of the slides. That way, as you preview all uh, across them, you can compare back to what it previously had detected it as and decide whether or not that was worth it or if you're done. Um, so again, I think this was around 37% to begin with. Now it's at 33 on this one, but you can see we really lost a lot of that debris, which is great. Um, we did, it seems... Nope, these still all look pretty good. So if you felt like by tweaking one thing, you know, you had lost this, you could always then increase your pixel size to gain back more. But honestly, uh, most of this looks good. And if you did that, you'd be probably affecting it by less than 1% confluence. So that's where you got to decide how much do you want to go back and forth. Um, but see, this looks really good. You're not picking up any of that background getting it 64% confluent. Uh, so I would say this at this point looks really nice, fairly accurate, not picking up too much debris. Um, you know, if you wanted to tweak it a bit more to get rid of these ones or even play around with the eccentricity to avoid more circular objects uh, because debris tends to be very round, uh, small and dark like this, uh, that would be something you could do if you were picking up, you know, if, if you'd been drugging it, you could create a processing definition uh, for um, specific drug treatments where you get uh, too many dead cells and it's collecting too much of those. You know, it's, it's counting too much of that towards the overall confluence. So um, that's where that can also kind of come into play. So, but as at this point, I would say be very happy with this processing definition and save it and apply that uh, to these cells. So once you're happy with that, you would go over here to file. Oh, and I should say, um, obviously this is just for regular confluence, but it has similar parameters that you can be tweaking for uh, if you're doing different kinds of fluorescence. So you can just keep that in mind uh, if you were to incorporate those type of assays. So, but you would just go to file, save as, name it something that makes sense, you know, MCF7s, with tamoxifen treatment or something like that uh, so that you know later on which one and then later it would come up in your processing definition list automatically so um, this is I showed you this on a proliferation plate but honestly it's the same process for a wound scratch plate because if you think about what a wound scratch plate is doing it's just initially detecting the scratches uh, but then it's which is very very good at and then it's just detecting the confluency of the cells within that. So while it has different processing definitions for them, um, and so you would have to create one for that cell line, it would be the exact same process that we just went through uh, for this. So, um, no, I'm not actually going to save this one. Uh, you know, and so then, and you can always go back, edit a previous processing definition, edit, you know, old image collections uh, to use for this. So... Just keep that in mind. All of those are available. Uh, and uh, another thing, one last thing, sorry, to uh, do is 
once you've created a processing definition you're happy with, it might be worth uh, testing it out just on a, a few wells, you know, over a smaller time set just to test it out, see if that data looks good before running it across everything and waiting, you know, the, the two to three hours it can take um, for it to run across everything. That's something I kind of like to do to make sure that um, this processing definition is likely going to work for the whole plate. So, um, yeah, that is everything. Thanks.